Monster Hunter Rise's Hunting Horn, the eternally controversial weapon that manages to bring as much to the table as it pushes off. While it is a departure from its tried and true musical nature of the past, this version brings a new agility to blunt weapons that it seems the hammer will never have. All that said, with how I'll be structuring this guide, I would recommend you watch the first tutorial on Hunting Horn for Monster Hunter World, since the Rise version makes some direct changes from it and builds on what that version did in some ways. And like that guide, we'll start off with a quick look at some good equipment to have. I'll be using the basic Kimura horn, though I recommend you experiment with different options, and I'll also be using the Kulu Yaku armor for its Stamina Thief, Slugger, and Horn Maestro. Quick note, Horn Maestro works a little differently in this game compared to how it used to. Now instead of extending your song effect duration, it speeds up recitals and boosts your shockwave damage, which is a concept I'll get to later. Just like the world guide, I'll go through each of the face buttons linearly and introduce the rules surrounding the combos. First up, we draw and- <laughs> Yeah, that's a new addition. Moving and pressing triangle while sheathed will only unsheath your weapon, like the gunners, and not do a draw attack. This allows you to draw smoothly into any one of your attacks, and by extension, any of your notes, with no problems. It's also quicker to draw while moving than while standing. Anyway, triangle. Standing and pressing it will perform the left swing, as usual. Then again, straight after we'll execute the multi-crush. Then one more time in succession, we'll bring out the forward smash. After this, continuing to press the button repeatedly will cycle through these attacks. Like World, the moving triangle attack is also the forward smash. You'll remember the left stick rule from that guide, and it does still apply for the most part to this game's face buttons as well. What's interesting is that the multi-crush animation is actually a sped up combination of the hilt stab and backward recital from World. And just a heads up, there might be a few animations that you might recognise or that I'll point out that are repurposed from older versions of the weapon. The circle button. Like World, the stationary attack is a right swing, followed in succession by the crush, which is also the moving attack. And then that repeats but this button can also do the kick up, only after a forward smash, an overhead smash, a melodic slap for some reason, a multi crush, or a jumping smash. That's because it follows the same combo logic that this version of the weapon tries to establish. Next up is triangle circle. Standing, you'll pull out the backwards strike, moving, you'll do the overhead smash, and cycling between these two moves will put the double swing in between them. Funnily enough, due to the double swing being in between these two attacks either way you go, you can actually choose how this combo plays out. Every second attack will be the double swing, and you decide whether to do the back slam or the super pound by using or not using the left stick. And another thing, this double swing functions, as does the crush, like a quick turn if you want it to be. Just input whatever direction you want and you'll quickly turn there, during the double swing. Like the encores with World, I won't be going into too much detail for the combo paths, instead I'll let you get your own feel for them to make your own discoveries about the moveset. I'm gonna be honest here, they really stripped the music system back past the bare bones in Rise, so where I split it into two sections before, it'll just be one section for this guide. Like World, your face buttons will perform both attacks and notes. Unlike World, the horn you're using won't actually change the colour of the notes, and instead you effectively have just three buffs to play for each horn, plus self-improvement and infernal melody. That's because there aren't songs anymore, now we have performances and chords. Playing two of the same note in a row will cause those notes to glow on the musical staff, and you'll get the full effect of that song tied to that note. Where every older version of this weapon has two levels to its songs, Rise's Hunting Horn only gives you one level to each song. And due to the song effects now only requiring one note type per effect, each horn has exactly three basic songs, plus self-improvement, which I'll get to later. While the songs themselves individually are quick to play, you might still think that they're a little slow for the pace of Rise as a game. And the developers would agree with you, because you can play all of your songs at once with one attack called Magnificent Trio. This move is playable with R2 and Triangle after you've had all of your notes present on the staff at once. It does take longer to pull off than any one of your other songs, but again, it plays them all at once, and it does a lot of damage, so it makes sense. So, self-improvement. Rather than being tied to any notes, it now plays automatically whenever you play music. Note that playing music in this game is distinctly different from playing notes, because playing music is what happens when you press R2, regardless of whether or not you have notes stacked up. For now I'll just say this effect is tied more to R2 than anything else, but there is a little more nuance to it as we'll see soon. Also, if you remember, World gave this song a solo attack buff, but Rise ditches that, only keeping the movement speed and the mind's eye effects. And now we've gotten past the caveats to otherwise sensible rules, we can look at what R2 actually does does on its own. This new recital is an updated version of Invigoration from Generations Ultimate, a hunter art that would add a slide with invincibility frames to your recitals. In this game it's the default so you can keep attacking and staying up in the monster's face while you fight it, not needing to worry about positioning. Unlike the older recitals though, again, you can't play notes with this one. This perform move only plays self-improvement and hits very low to the ground, but at least you get the iframes. And finally we're at the new mechanic, Infernal Melody. 
This is a fairly basic, though large, attack buff tied to a gauge that fills when you land attacks. When the gauge is full, you can press R2 after a magnificent trio to combo into the Echo Note animation from Iceborne, except that here it plays a 20 second damage buff rather than a note. And yes, like self-improvement, this buff is also the same across every horn. Alright, first up for the Silkbind attacks, there's L2 plus Triangle for Slide Beat. Costing one wire bug, this is a great gap closer, with hyper armor that otherwise serves the same function as R2. What's also nice about it is that it deals a hit of shockwave damage at the end, and you can combo from this into the Infernal Melody. Next is the Earthshaker with L2 and Circle. Costing two wire bugs, this is a powerful two hit attack that grants you a short period of hyper armor between the two parts of it. It's a huge slow burst of damage from an otherwise fairly fast weapon, and the second hit of it also deals shockwave damage. Now onto the switch skills, this is where Ryze's mechanics start to confuse things. The hunting horn switch skills, along with how to get them, are listed on screen now. Okay, first let's look at Melodic Slap, which... Okay, I've been trying to keep an element of impartiality in this guide, but... I really don't recommend this one. It's a slower version of the overhead smash or the super pound which it replaces and does less damage but that lower damage tries to justify itself by being a high KO value shockwave. Speaking of, now might be a good time for me to actually explain what those things do. Shockwaves are like a gun lance's shells in that they ignore hit zones. This just means that where most of your attacks will deal less damage on a monster's harder body parts, these attacks won't, although that doesn't change the fact that even on tough hit zones, Overhead Smash still does more damage on its main hit than the Slap does. Ok, next up is the Bead of Resonance. It's the Silkbind to replace Earthshaker, so it uses the same input and also uses two wire bugs. First off, deploying it causes a few ticks of damage, which is quite nice. But beyond that, you can imagine this egg as a miniature version of you. If you play songs inside a certain radius around it, it will play the same song effect as well, sending out an additional small burst of shockwave damage as well. And while the song duplication doesn't affect the potency of your normal songs, it doesn't boost the attack gained from an attack up song for instance, and it doesn't affect players further away due to its small radius, it can duplicate your healing song effects for everyone inside the radius. This egg is the number one reason why I say that Rise Hunting Horn manages to both suit the title of support better than any older version, while at the same time not having that title take away its validity as a weapon that we use to kill monsters. And one last thing on that topic, if you're using a horn that doesn't have an attack up song, the bead automatically plays one regardless, so you can bring in a full healing song set and not worry about losing out on damage buffs. Anyway, on to the next switch skill for bass rise, Melody Mode Echo. This one actually changes the way you apply your song buffs to something more like the older horns. Instead of playing one note twice to get a single buff, you can play whatever notes you like, then press R2 to do a recital, called a chord, and gain the effects of any notes you currently have displayed in your staff in the top left. This means that you can set up all of your notes on your staff since you have the space for it, then simply press R2 once to receive all of their effects in one go. Also, you may have noticed that the animation is different to the other one because it is. Both hits hit higher up here, and the attack deals more damage overall. And do you remember what I said about Slide Beat earlier? That otherwise serves the same function as R2. I didn't say it only played self-improvement. That's because, while yes it does only play that song if you're using the performance melody mode, it actually plays any notes you currently have displayed on your staff if you're using Echo mode. So those two attacks serve to play all of your songs at once, leaving the high damage magnificent trio free more often than with performance mode. The drawback for this melody mode is that it loses the iframes from the other mode, but in all honesty, half decent positioning, timed dodges and slide beat can all substitute for the need for that quite comfortably. Plus with echo you aren't restricted to the sometimes awkward consecutive note attack combos if you want to play a song. As I alluded to when I introduced it, for as much as this game adds to the weapon it also takes something away. That said, it does have its own appeal. So like when I told you to learn the different directional recitals and encores for World, I'm now going to say that you should try and do the same thing to figure out the combo rules for Rise. And one thing the combo system does add to the flow of the weapon is that it's able to integrate R2 more fluidly into its combos. Previously you couldn't go from a recital into any other attacks aside from encores, but now you absolutely can. Also, similar to World, you can do an aerial note of any colour but with the same attack, except this time you can do any note from drawing in the air. Alright, so Sunbreak added a few switch skills and they're all really good, unlike the mixed bag from the base game. Like before, the new switch skills are listed alongside how to get them on screen now. 
Let's start off with the swing combo. This actually replaces the crush combo, not the crush or multi-crush in their entirety, but the crush combo. That means where originally pressing triangle or circle twice in a row would perform different crush attacks, that combo path now leads to this new attack replacing the crush in the infinite combo. It's a useful positioning tool, and as someone who uses echo mode, I found this attack making me use pairs of the same note more often just to do this move. It also has a similar quality to the flourish, so while you can't play multiple notes with it, you can evade cancel out of it between the first and second hits, greatly helping with maneuverability. Speaking of maneuverability, you can choose the direction of your swing regardless of which note you use to play it. Triangle will default to left if no direction is input, and the circle will default to right, but like the double swing attack, you can choose which way you swing with the left stick. And even better, comboing out of this attack follows the left stick rule in a similar way to the way triangle circles infinite combo works, in that you can combo into different attacks with the same button depending on whether or not you're using the left stick. The next one we'll talk about is Silkbind Shockwave. Replacing slide beat and also using one wire bug, this move can serve three main functions, one of which is new to this weapon. First off, it maintains the hyper armor from slide beat, but launches you straight up into the air rather than forward, and also it only hits once. Then there's the fact that you can combo into Infernal Melody with it, not needing to use the Magnificent Trio or close unnecessary distance with slide beat, and then there's the part of it that buffs you, taken straight from the hammer out of Generations Ultimate. Although it doesn't play self-improvement like slide beat, for a period of time after playing this buff, every one of your hits that lands will create a small bubble that bursts after a moment, causing a decent tick of shockwave damage, which effectively means that every one of your hits gets a flat damage boost. And this buff is on a timer, unaffected by the amount of times the bubbles activate, meaning you can do this buff once and deal insane amounts of damage for a period of time afterwards. When I unlocked this move in this new save, I was amazed at just how quickly I took down Astalos thanks to this move and the next one. And that next Silkbind is actually another egg, but much more damage focused. In fact, it offers the single largest pop of damage the Hunting Horn can output in this game. Sonic Bloom replaces the Earthshaker and Bead of Resonance, also using two wire bugs, and actually activates very similarly to the bead. Whenever you play songs, this egg will grow a little, with the size of its growth depending on the size of the song you play. An empty recital fills it one third, adding more notes to an echo recital fills it more, and an infernal melody and magnificent trio instantly set it off. But what actually happens when you get it full? It explodes, causing a huge burst of shockwave damage in a decently sized radius with a lingering hitbox. The burst is big enough that you can expect to see the monster flinch or fall over more often than not if it gets hit, but be careful with it, because setting another one or moving too far away from the first one you set will make it explode with much less power, so you ideally want to set it off using songs. So obviously this version of the weapon is very different to how it used to be, and that actually translates to the playstyles, where before you could use positioning to align yourself to hit the monster where it hurts with one move out of a handful of swing arcs, now I'd actually recommend you use Evade Window as a more central part of your set. That way, even though this weapon doesn't actually have any counters, you can still stay up close to the monster and keep your damage consistent while you're fighting. What's even more fun is that in Sunbreak, there are skills that buff you whenever you iframe something, so you can effectively build the evasion mantle from world into your set. And as for my setup, in case you're wondering, here it is. I use echo mode, swing combo, and overhead smash on both of my swap scrolls, just because I see those are the most effective and fun options to me. Then I have Sonic Bloom and Silkbind Shockwave on the red scroll, and Earthshaker and Slide Beat on the blue. And here's a fun combat tip. If you have three wire bugs and use Sonic Bloom on one scroll and Earthshaker on the other, the Infernal Melody lasts long enough to be active for two Sonic Blooms and an Earthshaker before running out. Anyway, thanks for stopping in, and happy hunting!